If you love the ethereal, flowing look of alcohol inks, then you're going to love how a touch of gold makes your alcohol ink paintings even more magical. Now let's get started. First, I cut down a piece of Yupo paper into a manageable size and used painter's tape to tape it onto a Lazy Susan that I have covered with aluminum foil. Now we're gonna use 91% rubbing alcohol and some basic colored alcohol inks that you can get at any craft store or online. I'm using a turquoise blue, a pink, a purple, and a metallic gold alcohol ink. Um, I use a little palette to squirt some of that alcohol out on, and you can use a brush or you can use a eyedropper, which is what I'm using. And you're also going to want a hair dryer or a heat gun to help dry your inks while you're working on your painting. So to begin, I put some alcohol onto my paper with the eyedropper, and then I put um, just some random drops. Now, I want my painting to be mostly purple with some gold, but I want a little bit of pink and a blue, like a turquoise, peeking out here and there from the background. So that's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to start with that pink and that turquoise, and I'm going to put those drops down with just a little bit of purple so some of the colors blend. And I'm going to let that alcohol ink just kind of bloom out a little bit. It's going to mix with the alcohol. And then I'm going to use my heat gun to gently move the paint around with the alcohol. And you can see that it's just going to, you know, start making areas of color. And it's a continual process of adding more dye and then adding more alcohol and so on and so forth. Now, you're going to want to work in a well-ventilated area because the alcohol does have an odor, and um, you're going to also need to work rather quickly. Now, in my last video, I did an alcohol ink painting, and I went over most of the basics. You're going to want to have all your tools and materials right at hand, everything laid out. You don't want to be scrambling for alcohol if you need it. You want to have everything you know, right in within arm's reach. So, you know, you lay out your materials, think about what your color scheme is. And like I said, we're using Yupo paper. And what Yupo paper is, is it is polypropylene. So it's like a, a non-porous plastic. And you can use alcohol inks on other non-porous surfaces, such as glass. Some people use ceramic tiles. The Yupo paper can be rather expensive, but like I show in the beginning, I buy the big tablet on sale, and then I just cut the pieces down. So here what we're doing is we're putting down our background. I'm using that heat gun sparingly and trying to be careful not to get too close. I don't want to scorch my painting or warp my Yupo paper, um, but we're using that to dry and move around the areas of paint. So I'm gonna continue adding alcohol and adding paint until I have a background that I'm pleased with. So here you can see I have some areas like that one right there where the paint just kind of gathers and it makes a dark spot. And you can use a paintbrush if you like. I just use the end of my eyedropper tool and I'll even touch that area. And you know, sometimes I'll try to spread that paint out. So I'm going to lift the entire Lazy Susan to help move the paint around. Um, you're always moving your painting with this process. Uh, there's got to be movement or the paint's just going to sit where it is. So you want it to have that flowing look. And to get that, you need to lift it up and move it around. I'll tilt it, you know, left, right, up, down. Uh, at the same time, I'll have a hairdryer in one hand or that heat gun to help not just move the paint, but to help dry it. And that's how you get that really billowy flowing uh, effect. It's cloud-like and uh, you'll see where there's lines, those edges is where the paint is drying. So, you know, you can hold that on and let it dry and then move it a little bit and then dry it some more. And that's how you get those really nice um, layered effects. It's like an agate, you know, it's like a gemstone. And, you know, that was my point with making this was I was inspired to use a little bit of gold um, to make it look like an agate or, you know, some type of geode, which, you know, is very popular right now. And um, here we're going to try out a little bit of gold. This is the first time I ever used gold alcohol ink. I had bought some. I was anxious to try it. And um, I just used the tip of the applicator to kind of move it around a little bit and spread some on. Um, you can use a toothpick or a paintbrush or whatever you like. And I just created one line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to kind of um, 
branch it out a little bit. So here I'm adding a little more alcohol and I'm seeing how it flows. And, you know, it is very shimmery, really nice gold. I didn't know how it was going to react. I didn't know how much it was going to spread. It kind of really just sat on the paper. Um, so here I am adding some alcohol on top and, you know, visibly like pushing the paint out to try to get that marbled veined effect. I always loved the look of marbled paper. And that's what alcohol ink reminds me of. Now, as I'm applying this gold and working with this gold alcohol ink, um, I'm realizing the difference of it between the regular alcohol ink. Um, it definitely is heavier. It's not as thin and it sits on the paper more than it does spread. And it also, I mean, it has a great shimmer. Um, when I put more alcohol on top of the gold, you could see how um, the little molecules of gold just kind of shimmered across the painting. So if you do add a lot of alcohol on top of the gold, it will just spread that gold out all over your paper. So here what I'm doing is I'm starting to add um, a heavier layer of the purple. And I'm kind of going to try to preserve a line of gold across the painting to make it, like I said, like a vein in a stone. So I'm putting some of that purple on and I'm going to dilute it, let it spread, and I'm going to do some larger areas of the purple. I'm really happy with the gold so far. Uh, I did put a little bit too much alcohol in some areas of it where I can see that, like I said, it spread the gold area out a little bit. So I'm going to try to put some paint on top of that. And right here, what I'm doing is I, I'm putting the purple in and it's next to the pink and a little bit more alcohol in that. And I love to have those colors bleed together. And when they start to blend, it's just the prettiest thing. Now, here's another angle where I, I turned my lazy Susan over and I'm kind of just looking at it and saying, well, where, you know, where am I going to go next? Where do I want to add more color? And um, looking at the painting right now, it's probably about halfway done. But here you can see how that gold is moving. <laughs> uh, if you look closely, you can see pieces of it just kind of, you know, floated away. And I'm using my heat gun and I'm just going to move that color around. And I want to get some large areas of purple covering the whole painting. So now I'm going to add those larger areas of purple. And once again, I'll be putting some drops of the purple down. This time I'll be, you know, putting more down because I want large areas and some alcohol along with that. I'm going to allow the alcohol and the dye to mingle together and mix. And I will move it around. And then I will use my heat gun to not only move the dye and alcohol, but to help it dry. Now, you'll notice that I did put the purple right on top of that pink and that blue. Like I said, I just want to have a little bit of that pink and blue peeking through from the background of my painting when I'm finished. So now I'm going to do those large dominant purple areas. And what a beautiful color. You know, it's such a, um, a jewel tone. It's like a gemstone. You know, it really is. And you can see where you let it flow and you, you put that hair dryer on or that heat on and you see how it has those lines. It's like that you know, layered effect. And so now I'm going to go to the other side of the painting and I'm doing the same thing I did on the left. I'm going to do on the right now. So I'm putting large areas of that purple down. I'm putting alcohol in with it. I'm going to kind of let it mix together a little bit. If it, you need to give it some help, you can use a paintbrush or, you know, or whatever kind of tool you prefer. Sometimes I just use, you know, the end of my dropper, <laughs> as I say, and I'm turning it around and you know, some of that pink is going to mix in with that purple and, you know, what a pretty shade. So there it's flowing very nicely and you have those large areas and that's just what I'm looking for. So as soon as I get to move it around a little bit, I'll again use that heat gun. And, you know, it's it's nothing that, like I said, that you can do very quickly. It, it's a beautiful process. You know, you're putting all these layers on. And that's what gives it that 3D effect. And, you know, when you add the gold, you know, that even gives it just more of a 3D effect. And it, it's such a magical look. So here I'm nearing completion. I have, you know, the wet areas you can see. They're slowly drying. And then when I put that heat gun on them, they dry very quickly. I added a tiny little bit more of the gold where I noticed I had covered some up with the purple. I put a little bit of alcohol on top of that, let it spread out and blend in, and then 
to my very last step, which is to use the dotting tool with regular alcohol, um, the 91% alcohol, just dipping the dotting tool in and wherever you touch onto your painting, it'll spread that dye out and you'll get a little polka dot. Um, I did varying sizes, some larger, some smaller. I didn't do it all over. I only did it in certain areas like the dark corner. It's a great way to break up some of those dark areas. So I kind of had some meandering dots up in one corner and then a little bit in the other corner and then my painting was finished. I removed the painter's tape and then we can see how great it looks with light coming through it. Now I scan my artwork and I make prints out of it. I sell my artwork on Society6 on all kinds of products which you know if you've never done that and you're an artist it's something really fun to look into. Um, you can sell your artwork on phone cases and on, you know, bed linens and beach towels and all kinds of things. And I have two photos I'll show you here in the end of a phone case and a shower curtain made from this piece of artwork. But, you know, I hope you enjoyed this video. Alcohol inks are a lot of fun. They're accessible. They're inexpensive. I encourage you to try them if you haven't tried them before. And, you know, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I'll be back soon with some new jewelry making videos. And as always, you can find my books at penguinrandomhouse.com.